Welcome to the Writing Community Chat Show. Hello everybody, welcome to the Friday Night Chat Show. It is the Writing Community Chat Show on a Friday, which is the best day of the week, and we are here, myself and Chris Hooley, left Chris and right Chris, as you may have seen or know of on the show, and we are very excited to be here, especially with tonight's guest, which is going to be very much uh, a great show and lots of fun, and we hope you are here to enjoy that, and Chris, how are you doing? I'm very good, thank you. I'm so excited for tonight's guest uh, to come on the show. He's I, I don't say this often. He is my favorite writer and he is the best writer, in my opinion, writing at the moment. So I can't wait to get him on the show and interview. Chris, uh, it's going to be do you know what? My mouth was hanging open there because we've had so many guests <laughs> on this show. I'm not joking. This is genuine. Um, yeah. We've had guests on comedy, uh, horror, you know, uh, psychological thrillers on the show, big Netflix smashes. And you have never said before that this is my favorite author. No, and he recently came into that bracket because I've read his work, obviously, previously. We've had him on the show, but I've loved every single one of his books. Um, and you can't often say that about an author, but I can with tonight's author. He's absolutely brilliant. And if you haven't read any of his work, you need to rectify that in your life. I, I'm uh, taken back with that. One of, one of these books. <laughs> yeah, genuinely. I'm, I'm impressed that you said that because that, that clearly, the talent we've had means a lot. And hello, uh, Linda, to you on the chat. Very nice to see you on the show. Uh, great to see you and hear from you. Karen, hello to you as well. I think you're new to the show. Fantastic to engage with you and please enjoy the chat. If you're watching back or listening back on the podcast, please, uh, you know, reviews, ratings, subscribing, all that good stuff is fantastic for us. And thank you for taking the time. Um, Chris, uh, you know, it's been a good week and, you know, we can't complain. I mean, I'm from Wales. The weather's been horrendous this week. Uh, what's it been like for you? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you braved the weather this afternoon, didn't you? You went for a few cheeky bears. Well, we technically went for a day, um, I guess, date with my wife, which is the first time in a long time we've done Ooh. this. Obviously, with lockdown happening, we went inside the pub, <laughs> indoors with, you know, people. Uh, it, it's kind of weird. But, yeah, that happened today, and that was nice. But stepping outside was horrendous. But, you know, we can't have the best of everything. And the fact that we got to socialize and experience that was great. So... Um, yeah. I'm happy just to be on the show with you guys and experiencing this is what's kept me going through lockdown and I'm, I'm very happy to be part of this community and talking of pubs and beer and all things like that that's a nice little segue into our beer token book promotion <laughs> <laughs> who would have thought um, absolutely and uh, the beer token book promotion has had a little twist in in this journey tonight and that was because um, you know we'd, we'd have a little think about it and Yes, we've had a great loyal following to this, and a lot of authors that follow the show have really promoted their books and sponsored the shows, which is a great way of very, uh, and yes, it costs a little bit of money, but let's be honest, in comparison to a lot of promotion things, this is ridiculously cheap, but it also keeps the show going. Um, what are you trying to say, Agat? <laughs> what I'm trying to say is, like, yeah, for, for a promotional aspect of your own book, this is exceptionally cheap, and it's a great way to gain massive exposure. But this is taking a new turn. What we're asking people to do now is not only promote your own books and, and spend just a tenner on promoting your own book in a show that gets loads of exposure on YouTube and on the podcast, we're now suggesting why not promote someone else's book that you know, um, which is a great way of supporting the communities, which is what we do, right? So tonight's uh, you know, book that I'm going to sponsor, which I'm starting it off, of course, lead by example, I'm picking a book up and, and saying this is what you should check out. And that is someone who's been on the show and is a bit of a fan, for, uh, a show favorite of ours. And that is Kristen Bailey. And mm -hmm. perhaps, Chris, you remember Kristen. She's been on the I show. Do. Another awesome. person who have read all her books and she is hilarious. She um, is hilarious. She makes me cry when she brings a book out in, in the best way possible. I always laugh at them. Um, and the last one had a particularly <laughs> traumatic but hilarious birth uh, story. 
I was going to say trauma because if that was me and my legs were spread open the, uh, at the start of that novel, <laughs> experiencing the, the type of things that went on, I'd definitely call it a trauma. Uh, but yeah, she's hilarious. She's a great writer. I really want to talk about you and your pants right now, Chris, but I'll leave that to the imagination. <laughs> uh, anyway, so that be a token book promotion today is by Chris and Bailey. And she has a new book coming out, which I, I know some people I know will be very excited about this. Um, How Much Wine... <laughs> Perfect. Uh, we'll fix a broken heart. Uh, an utterly laugh out loud and put downable page turner by Kristen Bailey is available on June 30th. Uh, you can pre order that right now. And I'll read the blurb very quickly and then we'll get our guest on because I can't wait for that and we need to do that very soon. Uh, when Grace's husband passed away, there was no guidebook for the 27 year old widow. Crippled by heartbreak, she was clueless. Uh, was she allowed to wear denim? Should she be shrouded in black veil? What about t-shirts uh, printed with Tom's face? Three years later, things took a, a little different turn for Grace. Uh, she adopted two precious girls and she learned some life lessons. Uh, one, a wild night involves a label maker and the kitchen cupboards. Uh, two, when you drop the kids off at school, you have to deal with the parents who hang out uh, flyers saying, have you seen this cardigan? Uh, three, a supply of <laughs> SOS wine fixes almost everything. Uh, if that fails, biscuits, chocolate ones, because she's not a complete loser, are a good plan B. Uh, absolutely. And four, on rare occasions when venturing into the real world, liquid eyeliner is evil and borrowing your sister's push-up bra is essential. I wouldn't know about that. Uh, Grace's number one rule is to protect her heart uh, by only getting attached to her cookie jar. But Tom didn't die so that Grace could play it safe. Never stepping beyond the barriers of a comfort zone, can she take a leap and uh, get back to the old Grace who still believes in love? Um, looking at that, you know, blurb and compared to all her other books that have been outstandingly reviewed and respected, that is going to be another smash hit and number one bestseller. I can I can almost guarantee that. Um, please do check out Kristen Bailey and uh, you know pre-order it now. I mean, well done, mate. Like, I don't know how much you drank, but you managed to read that out. Um, so, well done. I'll give you a little round of applause for that. What and do I'm you sure mean? That? I right thought I did quite well way. on that one. <laughs> how rude. How rude. Uh, hello to everyone. Hello, hello. Um, okay, so, Chris, are you ready for tonight's guest? I am indeed. I've been waiting since last week for tonight's guest, so let's get him on. Okay, uh, tonight's guest, he's the international best-selling author of the January and David... January? January? January and David Come on, get... Come on. <laughs> That's my birthday. I can't say the, the bloody month. Uh, J <laughs> the January <laughs> David series, which has been long listed, short listed for the Amazon uh, Readers Independent Voice Award. His latest book, The Beresford, is released as an ebook tomorrow. And Chris has it right there on display. Welcome to the show. Will Carver. Hello. Oh, hi. I'm on. I'm in. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Will. How are you doing? I'm okay. I got the, you sent me the link through and then it didn't work because I'm on a Mac and I had to download Chrome quickly and then install it. And I was like, oh, but yeah, I'm chilled now. All right. Uh, yeah. Every time you use the Mac, do you sing Return of the Mac or is that just a kind of weird thing that I do? It might be something I do from now on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, how was things? How is Will's life? Uh, is everything good apart from the technical issues? How, how are you doing? Yeah. I, yeah. I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. Um, lockdown you know, is, is lifting and, you know, things are getting back to whatever the new normal is. It didn't, you know, it didn't massively affect me in, in a hugely mm. negative way. You know, I, I think mm. it's the same with any, any writer, you know, we sit inside on our own anyway, just, you know, so it wasn't a massive <laughs> change. Yeah. yeah. I was going to mention that that's kind of the, the biggest thing that we learned over lockdown is a lot of, you know, serious <laughs> writers were suggesting that lockdown hasn't really affected their, <laughs> their life and in terms especially in terms of writing i mean has your writing scale uh you know technique changed or have you had to adapt anything since lockdown or have you been quite comfortable yeah I've been, the, the writing front i think i've i've just i've just done what i no normally do maybe even a little more because uh, i'm trying to boost how much i put out there because i've got kind of a backlog of ideas and I, you know it'd be nice to get well i've got two out this year which is great mm. um but yeah, I know some people have been crippled by it because, you know, understandably it's it's brought people down. You know, yeah, it's yeah. you know, it's hard to get going. And you know, there's this weird kind of feeling that people have that they can't quite explain. And I think some writers have struggled with it, but 
luckily, I'm not one. I've you know, carried on going. <laughs> so Which well, is last time we spoke... for Chris. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, more more uh, coronavirus pandemic for the world. Yeah, yeah. Put him in a room and let him write forever. Yeah, yeah, I'll be three a year. Go on. Yeah. Um, so last time you were on the show, obviously, we were talking about you running a business as well as writing. Um, ha- has that <coughs> been impacted at all? Does that give you more time to write being perhaps confined to home a little bit more? Or have you been <coughs> stressing about that as well? Yeah, that's yeah. that was that part was pretty stressful because obviously yeah. it's a fitness business. And usually we're out kind of in front of people um, in rooms or in gyms. And that was all shut down. So essentially we had to take everything online and you know get people jumping around there the beginning you know everyone was just like yeah let's do it let's do it but as as time goes on people are like please just get me outside or get me somewhere else that isn't my house you know so so yeah it's it's been a slog the first six months were pretty good but then it's you know and now gyms are back open they're like come and join a gym again for like 4p it's like, oh, you can, you know, you can't compete. So you, yeah. you can, I, I can see both sides of that, but also in the midst of this, you had sort of the Peloton um, blossom, I guess, as well, where you had online interactive gym sessions on a big scale. You know, how did that, did you think it yeah. was smaller scale gyms and stuff like that? Or do you think it was just kind of playing into both sides there where they can all live on a nice playing field now that it's over or getting there? You broke up a bit there, but I think it, I think it affected everyone. I think it affected everyone. But um, but if you had a gym, you you were kind of supported by the government. Whereas whereas um, I don't. I kind of rent different spaces and and um, yeah and and things you know like lots of people. If, if you know the the whole Joe Wicks thing, everyone really got involved in that. But that was completely free and. You know, it's hard to do stuff like that for free if you if you don't have a couple of quid in your bank to support you in the first place. Thank you. Yeah. Just had um, a gin delivery. So Wow. That is amazing. I mean, one of my favorite pastimes, Will, of being um in lockdown was looking at Twitter and seeing your writer struggles combined with your various different alcohol deliveries as you just had gin delivered there. Yeah. Um <laughs> especially with the Beresford. I saw your journey of the Beresford and you talking about writing it and talking about going back into it and you were like, I'm determined to get this edit done whether it kills me and stuff like that. So yeah. tell us a little bit about the Beresford and about the writing process of it as well. Well, what it's about. Mm. Um, so it is about a an apartment building, which is called the Beresford, that's what it is. Um, Essentially, it's run by this little old woman who has this routine every day that she kind of, she gets up, she drinks a cold cup of black coffee, she has her poached egg, and then she cuts her flowers, and then she has a prayer, and then she has a bath, and she does the same thing every single day. And that's her routine in life. She's all right with it. She's quite a drinker as well. Um, And yes, so she, uh, this building she owns, um, there people live in there and one when one person dies um someone gets killed in the very beginning uh 60 seconds later there's a ring at the doorbell and it's the next person coming in to to move into the building and at first it's like oh that's a crazy coincidence the person like oh my god i've only got 60 seconds and i've got to get rid of this body but then events seem to repeat themselves and um when someone else dies 60 seconds later, the doorbell rings and it's the next person. There's this kind of ongoing thing. Someone dies, six seconds later, another person moves in and um, you don't really know why it's happening. <laughs> uh, um, and and that's that's why you read the book. You will <laughs> by the end. But uh, yes, so so that's the premise of it. Um, yeah, that, that's the premise. I, I found it, I, I wrote it quite quickly. Mm. I uh, I just I I'd been writing obviously the the three before they were all in the same series, and I just I wanted to get away from that and just r- try something different and have a little bit more horror in there, um, but still be quirky and 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 you know darkly um, funny. Um, and and I wrote it probably the f- in six weeks, eight weeks maybe, and. Uh, yeah, it just it just came out because it was it was really good fun and it was such a departure from the 
from the from the series. I don't know these people who write these writers who do twenty books in a row of the same character. It's just like, mm. wow, man, that is that's an investment. <laughs> Well, I, yeah. I'm not sure uh, how this comes across, but someone on the chat called Karen, hello to you, says, tell Will he needs to work on his elevator pitch for this one. Yes, that's my publisher, Karen, <laughs> who, who I love. Um, yeah, I, I meant to have the book in front of me, but I panicked because... Chris has got I, it, it's I, fine. I, I, couldn't, uh, yeah. I couldn't download it. Yes, I will. But this, is, this is why I have uh, such a wonderful mm. publisher. She, she usually do you know, does that on that, me. though, Will, like, I, I do know where you're coming from from that because when I was reading The Beresford... I was talking to people about it in work and they were like, I was like, I'm reading this great book. And they were like, yeah, what's it about? And I was like, well, it's, it's about this. And this little old woman and mm. she lives in the Beresford and the Beresford is kind of like a, alive in itself. And, and I just mm. found myself like, tr- <laughs> and I was like, I'm going to have to show up now because I'm going to ruin <laughs> this book for you. But I couldn't, I couldn't sort of sell it in one, <coughs> in one line. Like there was, I have there was- this issue with, with everything. I had it with good Samaritans. Yeah. People would ask me what it was about. And it's like, I couldn't say it without telling them like the, the big twist in the middle, <laughs> and, and then yeah. and then so I keep writing these books that I find hard to describe without giving it away. And it's my mm. own fault. But so it, what, um, let's talk. Yeah. Well, talk about this. Then there's a lot of people that that watch the show that are brand new into writing, and they're literally writing p- perhaps their first book or maybe the second. How do you write a blurb for a sto- for a book that doesn't explain the spoilers or the essential twists in the story? How do you do that? <coughs> It's so hard. Honestly, this is, it's the worst, it's the worst part of the process for me is kind of distilling what you've, this story you've come up with into kind of a bite sized um, piece of information. And um, yeah, I don't, I don't really know how to do it. Many, 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 many edits. I just, I think as well, when you write a book, uh, <laughs> cucumber hot pants, brilliant. Um, <laughs> but when you write it, you're so close to it. Uh, often what you think it's about isn't what it's about and and <laughs> your your agent and then your editor and your publisher will say well you know i know you've explained it this way but that isn't really what it's about and and it's nice to get that help and i i do need that as you can tell from my elevator pitch and my <laughs> get, getting grief from the publisher yeah. I've, I've put my phone on airplane mode so she can't text me <laughs> uh, so will what i find in all of your books is you're very good at having that initial hook, but then loads of little hooks throughout the book that just make it almost impossible to put it down. So is that something that you are crafting right from the off and you're thinking, right, I need something else here, I need something else here, or is that something that maybe comes after multiple edits? I I, I edit as I go along. So I don't, mm. I don't whack out a book really quickly and then go back through it and fix it. I fix it as I go. I just, I can't understand how someone would have 90,000 words of mess and try and <laughs> try and fix it. I'd rather have 10,000 and go back and do it and get it ha- almost how I want it and then and then keep going uh, that way. So, no, I, I know the, the premise, the, the overall idea, and then really I'm only kind of five chapters at a time. I'll, I'll scribble it down, honestly. The people who have like post-it notes and postcards and things all around their room, I just, I don't. I have like a scrap of paper and I write down my next five and and I'll, and I'll do that. So um, I do tend to do it as I go along. But I write very short chapters as well. And I try to make them, they all have to have a reason to be there. And it's great if I write a, a, a chapter that I think is like, wow, it's 3,000 words, which isn't a lot. I can usually chop it in half and put something in that's kind of like, like you're saying, one of these little kind of tidbits to keep people going. So um, that's that tends to be how I attack it. Mm. There's been a, a comment on the chat, and that's from someone called Paul. He said, blurbs are difficult. I tell authors that it's like a menu outside a restaurant to lure customers in. Um, and that's quite a good way to think about things. You know, you're really trying to attract a person to – to the the story with minimal kind of input, but at the same time, really wanting them to sell, uh, you know, um, lure into that story. So, uh, I mean, it's something that you, is a work in art, and I guess people will have to adapt to and try to to learn in the process. So, you know, it it's, is. It's I not... think I think as well. It's you start by when you approach a uh, an agent or a publisher, you have to put mm. kind of your story into two pages. You know, that's initially that's the first part, and it's like how do I get that book into two pages? And then you have to, then they'll ask you to put it so it fits on the back of a, 
a book and then from there you have to come up with like a strap line just one line that says you know mm. um what, what's so what, the one for this i can't remember mm. leave your soul at the door like it's like how do we how do we condense it all it's it yeah. is an art and it's i'd rather write a whole other book than come up with a blurb <laughs> i really would I, I don't ring the doorbell um yeah one of the things that I really like your books, and I've compared it, and I'm going to get his name wrong, his surname wrong, because I don't know if I'm pronouncing it, but Chuck Polunknik, that's how I've said it multiple times. If I'm wrong, then I'm sorry. Uh, but obviously he wrote Fight Club. Polunknik, yeah. yeah. There we go. Uh, I knew someone would correct me. <laughs> but um, he puts loads of little <coughs> really interesting like bits of information that's so obscure, like in terms of like making fat um, from like human flesh and stuff like that the fact that you can make soap not make fat make yeah, soap, make soap from, from the fat, fat of yeah. humans um and I, i'm finding that more and more in your books as well and i suppose my question is do you share a laptop with someone and if they saw your google history <laughs> like how did they react to that yeah i do look up some some really weird things so i think in mm. there's a there's a chapter in the Beresford. um and it is based on this documentary that I kind of I stumbled across while I was looking. And um, this guy ha said he he had gone to hell for 43 minutes, not, mm. you know, like gone to a bad place. He'd actually he'd gone to hell. He'd experienced what it was like in hell. And he was kind of traveling the world, telling people this in front of crowds of like thousands of people who paid to see him and give him money. Mm. And yeah, so I mean, I mean, I won't tell you what I searched to get that. But yes, I mean, if someone looks up my search history, I, I do look up some weird things. But but I do, I'm, I am hugely influenced by Chuck Palahniuk because I, I just think mm. he's brilliant. And if you look at something like, oh, which book is it? Is it Survivor? He, he's, he talks about kind of all the like life hacks of how to clean things. Like if you've got like mm. sweat in your like t-shirts or whatever you like spray it with hairspray and rub it with a biro or whatever it is and it's like i love yeah. all those little things that um that can kind of really bring a book alive and and, and add something mm. yeah so, i mean there, there's some horrific things that i've in the beresford in terms of like you know without giving too much away like disposing of certain body parts and stuff like that and i was like is that true like and i had to sort of like go and look and then when you find out that it is i'm like whoa like this is next level sort yeah. of research but in a very different way like do you do you think that you're sort of gaining a bit of a cult following in that respect because chuck obviously has a very like very unique fan base that absolutely love his work and follow him through all of his books. Do you think that's something that's starting to happen with your work and, and how are you sort of dealing with that pressure that, that's coming along with that? Yes, I do think I have that. I do. Um, I think it's really hard in publishing these days to have any kind of, kind of brand loyalty, you know, like, like, you know, yeah. but I think, um, with a render books, yeah. um, not just me, but the books that they 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 put out, um, they're all so so good and so challenging and so different. And I think it kind of inspires that kind of uh, like following. Um, so yeah, I do I do. And people keep saying, you know, you have a cult following. I was like, I'd like a bigger cult following. That'd be lovely. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, there's some big cults out there. Let's. Um, yeah. so, but yes, it, but, but I do find that there there is. me off as I get people like six o'clock in the morning they've read it already it's it's, mm. it's I mean it's lovely yeah mm. can I just ask if you have you know a, a, a following or a cult following does that make it any more difficult to release another book or the next book or perhaps a different story in, in a series or a different chapter in, in entirely when people are so committed to what you already have written, is there like a pressure that stops you wanting to change things or do you just get stuck in that mold there? I think the kind of writer I am and the, and, and, and the publisher I have, um, and the, and, and, and the people who read my books, they expect that. 
yeah. they expect me to always do something a bit different and i th i think for, for writers with you know the the big publishers if they write something and it doesn't quite work or it doesn't quite hit they can be dropped it happened to me i was with uh, random house and and my second book my first book did really well my second book didn't and then it was like bye mm. um whereas i kind of feel comfortable enough that um if i did try something different and it didn't hit i'll get another go um and i think and i feel that way about my readers as well i think you know they expect me to to, to write something like that I, I mean i've been really scared about the beresford because um because it is a bit diff it is i mean it, you can tell it's me but mm. um it is different to to the last three so um but it's, 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 it seems to be going okay so far mm. excellent and i suppose one of the appeals i don't know if this is like a male appeal in terms of the content that you're writing about and you've got sex in there, you've got violence, you've got, I don't, I don't know if this is like kind of sexist for me as a reader, but I, re I don't know if I relate more to your books because I can sort of recognize the characters in there. It's the stuff I kind of like reading about. Like, obviously I work in a school with a lot of boys and I'm thinking, if you could just read this, like your whole <laughs> life would change towards reading. Yeah. Um, so, I suppose the question in there is like, when you're writing, are you writing for you first and then the audience that you, you know that love your work or are you writing to the audience first in that respect? You're definitely just me. I have to, I have to be interested in what I'm, mm. in what I'm writing. So I, I, you know, and you hope that the people who've, who are going on this journey with you book to book, mm you know, like what you put out, you, but you can't control it and you can't second guess it. And you can't think, oh, you know, aren't these cozy crime books doing really well now? I think I'll <laughs> knock one of those out because I, 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 I can write one. I could write, I mean, my, my kind of cozy would be pretty dark, you know, just, yeah. I just couldn't do it. Um, so no, you can't write, you can't write for an audience. Um, so yeah, it, it, I, I do it for myself and I have to be kind of interesting with like with, with the last one Hinton Hollow Death Trip you know writing mm. as evil I just it mm. was tough but it was just so enjoyable that I just you know and I was doing that for me to like to enjoy the writing and I remember um when Good Samaritans was uh published I was talking to SJ Watson and he mm. said he said to me he read it and he could tell that I was enjoying <laughs> writing it just from reading it and I thought I thought it was a really nice compliment yeah. Let's talk about uh, very quickly then, Will. When you talk about these books and the darkness inside these books and, and your enjoyment in writing this, where does that inspiration come from and why does it drive you to want to write that sort of material? I don't... I don't know. I, um, <laughs> I was... I, because I was, I was, I was never go going to write uh, crime stuff... Um, it was kind of suggested to me back in the day that, that my style would suit it. So I kind of went down this route. Um, but obviously with my last last few books, they are crime. Um, but, but I, I like to think of them like crime plus weird, you know, and, and there's always some kind of weird weirdness to them. And I think with with any any book, any genre, you can you can use that to, to 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 talk about things that matter you know social issues and you know politics whatever so um that's kind of what i try to do i i, I get things off my chest or i you know I, I look at the world and think oh we should be talking about this but i just do it through this this way i don't know why it appeals to me and but but it does and i and i like the fact that you could you can be so brutal with it as well you know yeah. with, with with crime so and and, and the world's a brutal pro brutal place at the moment there's, there's clearly a you know a really fine touch when it comes to sort of brutality and stories and, and not overstepping the mark and going too far in some some areas perhaps have you got any tips for someone who's writing in that area for the first time without you know just keeping it tasteful and impactful at the same time have you got anything that could kind of support that information <coughs> yes um i think there is that kind of want to put everything everything you can in, into a book isn't there but um 
and and you know less is more people always say it but it just has to be in there for a reason yeah um so i go back to good samaritans again there's a, a lot, lot of sex in, in there and um my lovely publisher doesn't put a lot of sex in the books and and, and a lot of the other arenda writers were like well how comes Will gets to put loads of sex in, in this. In, <laughs> and she was like, because it's like integral to the character, that's how she mm. functions. Um, so don't put it in there if it's not needed, mm. I think. Brilliant. So and and the, same with, the same with violence as well. But I find mm. that um, I try not to describe too much mm. about the violence, but, but then that's almost worse because the reader then mm. thinks that, that, that you have written, like, like I've had people say, oh, this book is so gory and it's like I didn't even say the word blood in that book you know but but they've, <laughs> yeah. I've, I've obviously conjured something in their mind that they think it is so well yeah yeah you can't win so, so well you said obviously about being a crime writer but when I read your books I don't necessarily automatically think they are they are crime obviously there are crimes within them but I suppose if I was an owner of a bookshop and I was putting your books onto a certain shelf I'd probably have a reserve shelf that was like a sort of what it means to be human shelf um, especially in Good Samaritans because that I feel like reading that I felt a lot of similarities with the main character which was slightly depressing for me yeah. so I could imagine myself literally phoning people at night going do you want to talk yeah <laughs> which is pretty depressing mm. for me but I thought the crime element was almost like in in the background um, and it was the the human interaction that was at the forefront. So it, again, what makes you think, like, why do you write about that? And why is it so appealing to you in terms of like relationships and people's like thought processes and how they react to people and stuff like that? I just think that's, that's the most interesting thing, isn't it? In <laughs> who needs a hug? Um, I, I think that's, that's what people are interested in. I think everyone as well now is, so connected and, and we're all putting our feelings out there and a lot of the time it's not real feelings. So I think it's something that like people need, you know, we, mm. we need to kind of unpick what is going on now because there's a lot of, you know, fake news or, or but, but, but even people's posts on social media are fake because they, they want to portray something. And, and mm. before social media, that wouldn't happen. Mm. Um, so the crime is, is kind of, yeah, it is just, a secondary thing um mm. and, and like i said i wasn't i didn't come into this you know business to write crime um i do love it now but um <laughs> but i think yeah like i said earlier you can use this to 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 mm. talk about the stuff that actually people want mm. to talk about flawed characters and political things that are going on in the world Let, let's talk yeah. very very quickly before we move on about how someone who comes into writing you know gets picked up by an agent and and the publisher and you think this is going in the right direction and you get told that what you're writing isn't kind of what they want you to write as in like your story they want you to write sort of crime at, at that point how did you feel and did you what were your complications in your mind and your process at that point when you thought i want to write this but that's what they're telling me to write how did you sort of tackle that experience i think uh, first time round before I was with Arend, I was kind of very new and young and green and and just hugely appreciative to just be around. You know, I, I just felt like a complete fraud. I was, you know, I was at an event with like writers who have been writing for 10 years and were bestsellers and... Yes, well, I've forgotten what the question is. Um, <laughs> What did you ask me? I, uh, basically, about how, <laughs> as a writer, you you kind of had. A oh vision. yes, and then and then they and they kind of compromise yeah. what you're thinking. Um, I just went with it. I let. Mm -hmm. I, I I I just thought they know better than I do because they've been doing this forever, um, and I'm new, and they must know. And well, I, <laughs> I guess you know, did they really? I don't know because because things died off for quite a while and. I'm just having a really different experience of it now mm. um, where where I, I just, I, there's a, a real freedom to it. I think I said this mm. before, there's just a real freedom to it. And that is liberating for any writer because you, you feel like you, you can try anything. And yes, I mean, I do put things in and, you know, 
Karen, the publisher, and and West Editor will say, this is just not right. You can't put this in. And I feel like I can stand my ground where I feel it, but I also, but I can also take on. So I just, you know, a bit of experience. You know, I mean, I, that, that comes across like a, a sign of a really good relationship with the publisher. And, and often we have people that are even told what to do or they really kind of reject what they get told what to do or, or they want something else. So you sound like you've got a great relationship in that respect that you can work together and develop something, you know, in both mindsets in the right place. Yeah, well, I mean, it is a t even even like the cover design. Our cover design is, is amazing. He comes up with some crazy stuff, but that isn't just here's your cover. It's done. I mean, the things that, that that don't get put on the cover are better than a lot of the stuff I see out there. He's so great, but we all get involved. You know, me, the writer, the agent, the publisher, the editor, the designer. You know, we'll we'll put it out to you know readers sometimes, like a select few, and say, what do you think? Which one works? Which one doesn't? It's, I mean, it is a team thing. You yeah, you write the book, but then mm. you know you need these people to make it what it is in the end. Mm. So, well, with the Beresford, obviously, you you open the book by talking about it being in any city, sort of any town, any place. Um, obviously, without giving anything away, do you yeah, reckon good. this is something that you can go back to, maybe in different parts of the world, perhaps, <laughs> um, and maybe explore new, you know, new characters and in. in in the sort of world that you've built yeah without you know you're trying not basically. to give anything away i know it's hard <laughs> yeah. sorry sorry yeah, for writing sorry. this stupid book <laughs> i basically i wanted to not say where it mm. was so that it could be anywhere so that if you were mm. reading this in you know new york you could you could think oh yeah mm. there's a building like that in just outside new york or if you're in mm. tokyo or, or you know hamburg or wherever um mm. So I deliberately didn't say, hmm. you know, a place, London, so so that wherever you read it from, you can kind of relate to it. And, you know, we all have, you know, there was, there's always like a creepy building or, hmm. you know, I've driven down a road like on like the school run for like years and years and years. And I noticed a house the other day that I'd never seen before. So, I mean, hmm. it, it, did you ever get that? Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, well, a couple of weeks ago, I was riding my bike, Chris, but don't worry, I didn't fall off this time. But before I fell off my bike, I was riding down this country lane that I've been down many times. And someone had pointed out to me that there was a, a building sticking out of the, the field behind us. And I turned around and saw that building was like a skeleton of a building. And the actual spooky looking building was only half a building. It was like a skeleton. And it was the freakiest thing I've ever seen. But you, you're completely right. You, you can travel past something so many times over and over and over without actually taking in what's around you. And it's only until you sit down and study the details that you could really think about that and, and put it into something, you know, like a story. Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah. So, Will, who is your favourite character to write in the Beresford? Because obviously you've got quite a few in there. But <coughs> was there any that you enjoyed more than others? I... Yeah, I, I, yes. I, re I really like them all well all of them apart from the artist guy mm. scythe i i didn't like him and i didn't want to like him and i didn't want readers to like him and uh but also i quite like that writing a character that you don't like and then they die and you're kind of pleased and then you have to think to yourself oh my god i'm pleased that someone just died um <laughs> i love mrs may because she's kind of the constant throughout it and she's yeah, I, I, I know, you know, if you've read it, you know, I don't, again, I can't say too much, but I, I have a real soft spot for her. She's kind of sweet. And the thing she and the reason she's there is mm. is, is a lovely reason. Um, and yeah, I guess I liked Gail as well, because I like her. You know, she's she finds out she's pregnant and, and basically her, everything she does revolves around. I need to protect my baby. You know, and, and, and I quite like writing that character. I haven't done one before. Mm. So I like them all. I like them all. Yeah. There are a lot, but um, mm. yeah, I like them. So, well, there's a few books that kind of remind me of your books. Um, not necessarily the Beresford, <laughs> but um, Jeff Lindsay, who wrote the Dexter series, he uh, gave Dexter like a dark passenger um, and almost tried to talk like... 
I think if he could have read uh, Hinton Hall's death trip, he probably would have taken that sort of narrative on board and tried to use that in his own. But this came out about five or six years before and he was trying to give the dark passenger a voice and he was trying to give evil a bit of a voice. Um, and then I'm thinking about Damned as well. Uh, yeah. With Chuck. Yeah, yeah. Um, so do you have any books that have really influenced you in terms of like when you've gone, oh, I love that idea, I'd really like to explore that in my own writing and see if I can take the very essence of that and maybe make it really good. Yeah, <clears throat> of course. Yeah, I mean, anything Chuck's done, I, I, I lasts with um, lasts with me. I, uh, but I think American Psycho is mm. is a big one, and, and my my book after the Beresford um, Psychopaths Anonymous. I've I kind of I mean, it could have been called. British female psycho. I mean, it's it's, it's kind of it, it is that you know. I, I love that voice of you know. It's so kind of cold and calculated and just removed. I love how how removed he is from from the things that he does. So yeah, I think that's 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 a big influence on me. And obviously, Brett Easton Ellis was a huge influence on Chuck Palahniuk as well. So mm. yeah, I keep coming back to that, but. <laughs> It is good. Cool. Actually, the last time we, I was on here, uh, you we were talking about Chuck, and I was like, oh, "I'm his biggest fan." And you said, "Oh, have you read Beautiful You?" And I hadn't. I was like, "Oh my god, I've missed a book." So I have bought yeah. it, but I haven't read it. I bought it. I was going to uh, tweet well, you actually. Yeah, that is an absolute treat because, um, there, I mean, I love Chuck as well, but there is. I did my dissertation on Beautiful You, and my uh, lecturer she had to read it as a result, and she was like. Why did you make me read this? Like, it was yeah. so, like so insane because yeah. I think the very concept of what he had, it's sort of Chuck. At, he's like he's almost trying to be too clever with that. Yeah. Um, which uh, have you read his? Um, oh, what's it called? He's on. He's kind of like equivalent. I've got it. Writing. Yeah, I bought that as well. Yeah, I bought yeah. that at the same time. Yeah. Well, that's really good. But in there, he talks about shock factor and trying to like almost give the reader something completely unexpected. And he talks about how he, oh, what was the book? He wrote a short story that made everyone basically faint. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. And he, he was talking about the process of reading it aloud and enjoying the moment where he'd, he'd know the bit was coming where people would just literally drop um, in, like, when he was reading to a live audience. Um, but with that, it's, like, so beautiful you, going back to that. It's like so intense in certain parts of it and so so sexual like it's almost disturbing to read at parts yeah uh, of it as well for the so i don't know why i'm waffling but you got me talking about <laughs> yeah yeah well, 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 i'll read i'll read the book and then i'll read your dissertation as well you can send it yeah in. that, I that mean, would be hilarious imagine writing something that you expect people to faint i mean how could you ever appreciate that or even come to terms with that i mean it must be absolutely mind-blowing and to get comfortable with that must be a, a, an even bigger extension of your ability to write it's, it's mm. I find it really hard kind of reading out, mm. <laughs> reading my book aloud. And when, yeah. when we did, you, we didn't do it this year because of lockdown, but we do uh, like an Arenda Road show where like mm. 15, 20 of us just go around the country and we have like a minute to pitch our books, which I'll work on. And then uh, <laughs> and then we, we have to read one minute of our of, of one minute of the book. Um, and yeah. it's really what you're going to do. And sometimes and you're like oh they love that page i'll do that again tomorrow and then you'll do it and you'll get like tumbleweed it's just mm. it's really scary <laughs> reading out your own stuff wow cool yeah, definitely. chris we're going to get onto the simple questions and we do have a little little quiz at the end uh, just to see if we can get will to beat chris um do you want to start us off with the questions I mean, I feel like we should ask Will some different questions because obviously he's already answered these questions uh, before. Yes. He, did, he hasn't answered this one because this is new since he's arrived. So I'll ask him this one. Um, and it's a bit morbid and it does fit in quite nicely. Um, so you have to kill an author. Uh, no, sorry. <laughs> That's a good start. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Just yeah. kill an author. Just go out Just and do kill it. Uh, no, I can you think have of a few. <laughs> <laughs> no, you have to resurrect an author. So you can write a novel with them, but on the condition that you get to resurrect them, you have then have to kill them. There, there's the killing the author element. Jeez, that is hard. That is hard because I, I would... 
I feel like I would, it would probably be Bukowski or Hemingway. I know, like, I'm, like, pitching, like, way <laughs> above my level. But on writing, but I think on drinking, I think we're kind of level terms. <laughs> so I think I quite like to write something with one of those. And then we, we, we could both drink ourselves to death. It'd be brilliant. Um, oh, that, that yes, the best but I think, ever. but I think Bukowski would probably win because he was, um, he's a little more captivating. And um, while he is an ass, he's not as much of an ass as, as Hemingway was, I don't think. <laughs> well, yeah. can I just, yeah, but... what is sat in your fruit bowl? Is it, is it like a deer? Is what's happening now? You left, left Where's side. the fruit bowl. Oh, here. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. This is. I was like a, like a weird statue of like a moose or something. Yes. I don't know. I, don't know. I couldn't see what was behind. I'm in the dining room. Yeah. Oh, <coughs> that's not it. Chris, so yeah. I'll put you, in, put you under pressure. Obviously, don't ask Will a staple question because oh, okay. he's already answered the other staple questions. Ask him something else. Ask him something else. Okay, uh, Will, yeah. if you could take... Uh, this is kind of a very similar story, but if you... In a way, but it's not. If you could take a character from fiction, whether it be, uh, you know, literature, TV, or film, and take that character eight, for a day out, and it can be a date, it can be a, a day to the cinema, you know, day oh, drinking. Chris, no, hmm. let me stop you there. You have to take somebody else's character and write a sex scene with them. All Which right. character would you pick and why? Oh my god! Right, that's, that's, yeah, that's a bit. All right, so, yeah, but we know we know character. we're very good at doing that. So, yeah, somebody else's yeah. character. Oh gosh! Wow, that has put me on the spot. Um, <laughs> let me think. Well, when when you said go on a date, I was thinking Dale Cooper from Twin Peaks, um, <laughs> without a doubt, because he's just exactly the right level of quirkiness for me. And you know, I we'd go out and we'd have you know coffee and cherry pie that's and that's it and we talk about i don't know something but um i don't know a sex scene i, I don't know maybe i'd probably stick with um twin peaks and do something with audrey horn because she is pretty much who i base a lot of my the females in my books on Ooh, okay so uh so yeah so um it's a good answer maybe yes we can it's, it's, it's why it's why twin my peaks. first my first uh, in Girl 4, her name is Audrey David. I called her that because of Audrey Horn. I based her kind of on what she looked like. So, yeah, so she's got some sex scenes, especially in the third book in that series. That's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I still remember writing that. I was down in my little writing shed at the bottom of the garden. I was thinking, this is working. This is working. <laughs> yeah. It's good. It's good. Yeah, I mean, I've written uh, technically a sex scene in my second uh, book that I, I kind of released. And the only issue I read upon was the fact that I kind of realized that my nephew who was kind of 14 ish at the, at the time was kind of reading the first in the series and maybe stumbled mm. upon this. Do you have any issues like that when you write or do you just think nah, that it is what it is? This is kind of happening. I think, you know, almost everyone does it. So, uh, you know, it's, it, it shouldn't be an issue. I mean, it's, it slightly is like, you know, my mum might look down her, down her nose at me a bit like, oh, yeah, so um, <laughs> I remember that scene in, you know, the phone box or whatever. I say, oh, God, yeah, I, I, I do I do forget. I just kind of get, get caught up in it. But, um, yeah, well, you've got to be careful, yeah. haven't you? Yeah, I mean, one day my kids are going to read it, not for many years, but, you know. yeah. Love it. I love the idea of Chris's nephew just carrying his second book around like, you really like that book. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially Daisy, what she finds out. I mean, oh. anyway, um, Chris, okay, you threw a curveball there, but if let's go back to that question because I want to know, because forget the sex scenes, but if you could take any character and have a day out with a character, any character in fiction, what character would you take well? Oh right, what? Well, so it can't be Dale Cooper. That's what. That, that's who well, I would can. take. You, you yeah. Can yeah. Take Dale. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, you said sexy, my, fa though. my favorite, my favorite characters in in TV, particularly, are are Dale Cooper and and Fox Mulder. They are they are mm. they are everything. And you can especially, I mean, when you read Hints and Hollow Death Trip, I I really channeled my my love of Twin Peaks, my obsession. There's this <laughs> so many references in that if you are a hardcore fan you still probably wouldn't find them all in there um so so i mean just for example so the the population of um hinton hollow is 5120 
which is a population. They, they it made it to kind of small town, so they added a one to the beginning. And so in Twin Peaks, mm. Twin Peaks has 10,000 more more people than uh, Hinton wow. Hollow. But yeah, it starts there. So yeah, I'm obsessed with that. I'm obsessed, yeah. Cool. So, so Will, I, I was just going to ask one more question because it's come to Go mind. On. Sorry. <laughs> Go on. Um, a alcohol sponsor has got in touch with you and they've said, listen, Will, we want you to write a short story about our product where you personify our alcohol. Which alcohol would be the best one for you to write about as a person? And um, what would you do with it? Uh, I well, I love Japanese whiskey. I just love wow. it, and and um, mm. and like the Suntory brand um, is is mm. is the best by far. And um, yeah, the, any any hibiki whiskey is just is brilliant. It's brilliant. So uh, I don't know. I I mean, I I quite I quite like the idea of um, writing kind of like a Japanese mm. Tokyo hardcore detective. Um, PI or something, you know, who drinks Suntory. Oh, yeah. I, you know, yeah, that could that could work. I, I, I mean, the like word that. hibiki is is pretty much fantastic. I think it's a great word. It's yeah, it's amazing, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, cool. you know, that could happen in lovely. the future. Yeah, yeah. Chris. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. We'll put that out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Will hibiki cover? Uh, I mean, Chris, what we're going to do is we're going to move on, and we're going to get the the new family member done before we get some questions in. And we'd be pushing oh, yeah. it for a quiz, but we'll do it. We'll see what happens. Um, so this is the part of the show, uh, Will, that we do introduce someone on the, on the show that has followed us on Twitter. And this is a new family member that we we give a bit of a boost that they may be an author. They may have very few followers on Twitter. So we give them a shout out and we give them a GIF. Do you know what a GIF is? A GIF? I know it's a GIF. It's not a gift. I watched the uh, the Ian Rankin one the other day. He's oh. very, very <laughs> nice, isn't he? Yes. Um, yeah, yeah, beautiful GIF. man. Um, yeah. Yeah, that, that kind of went sideways. But yeah, a GIF. So this person <laughs> is. I'll play a little video and we'll find this person out. And we can get Chris to send and the audience to send them a GIF. So that person is Marissa Coons, and her Twitter is at Coons, K-O-O-N-S, Marissa. And she is the author of the newest Cool Kids novel, The Birthday Party, and she has 430 followers. Uh, Will, what gift do you want to send her? And it can be absolutely any theme that you like. Well, I feel like we should we should type in the word hibiki, because we just spoke about it, and see what comes up. I love See that. what comes up. <laughs> Chris, put I'm in so her bicky. You said her bicky. <laughs> <laughs> Why? What else do you think? Let's have a look. What have we got? Anything good? He's 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 looking intently. I don't even know how to spell her bicky. H i. <laughs> it's all the eyes. H i b i k i. That's going to be word of the week next week, Chris. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I've just. I've literally just. T <laughs> I nearly. Tweeted her the word Hibiki. Right, it's brilliant. <laughs> you fine. just you get a load of kind of manga Hibiki. stuff up. Yeah, I'm gonna send. I'm gonna send her one as well. Chris, have you got one? Yeah, he is right. It is a lot of like. I like that one of the the top one with the guy flying through the air. That's quite cute. I like it. Yeah. I'll okay. Like okay. That. Yeah. Do send it. him Hibiki. Um, rocket punch. Yeah, Definitely. rocket punch. Let's do it. <laughs> so very very shortly we're going to have questions from the community which is you guys watching the show right now please send oh, us some questions I was so in. excited to send the rocket punch that I didn't put any of the hashtags on it so oh, I was Chris, literally just, just sent her a random gif um, with no um, links to what it actually is all about which is the new family member <laughs> uh, well before we, we get the questions from the community can we just ask you as we always do is there an author that you're really into at the moment and you could tell people to get can I look into uh, oh god, what have I read at the moment? I really, I think this year, I really liked the Rule by David Jackson. I've, uh, I've kind of followed him from the beginning, but he's kind of he's really, really upped his game since he moved publisher. And I think, uh, yeah, the Rule, yeah, uh, yeah, you've got to read it. It's it, it's it's brilliant and it's utterly heartbreaking at the end. But it's it's a crime thing. But it's yeah, just yeah, get mm. that. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. And so get all his other stuff as well. All other stuff. Yeah. Get all his stuff. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, <laughs> so we've got a couple of questions, and then we'll, if we can fit the quiz in, we'll be running slightly over, but I think we can do it. So what, the first question we have in from the community, thank you guys for sending the questions in. If you do have questions right now, please send them in in the chat, and we will ask them. Uh, the first question is from Four Bears Books. Have you ever thought about writing about a celebrity affair? He's so, so, so he, <laughs> this is Four Bears Bookshop, and every every time I, I write a book, he he sends me a message saying, "Are you going to put a celebrity affair in this one?" So that's why this question has come up. Do you want us to block him? No, no, he's fine. He's great. He's great. He's a new no, new independent bookshop that opened up in in lockdown. What a crazy time to do it. Um, so no, uh, yeah, I do mention that in the Beresford about celebrity affair, but I don't do a storyline. <laughs> Um, what, what what's the fascination? I mean, is it like you know the the fact that they're so? I mean, in reality, they got a persona where they could pretty much, in reality, date a lot of people, and yet they go with another celebrity or, or perhaps yeah. someone else. Is is that why there's a reason there, or, or do you just kind of do it for the? I don't know. Or, what is, what's well, the drive? Have you that? had an affair with the celebrity? That, that mm. could be a new twist on it. Oh, no, no, no. Um, <laughs> I certainly wouldn't say about that very famous swimmer. No. Um, Not on this show. I, yeah, I don't know. I just think he's being silly. He's always, you know, affairs are, are, are good things to write about, aren't they? Um, Indeed. But no, he's being silly. Okay. <laughs> so from Karen, I think we've had a question from here before. Um, how has publishing changed uh, across your career? Do you think it's easier to be published or... I'm more ruthless, perhaps. Ah, oh, that's that's my publisher. Um, <laughs> yeah, it has changed. Yeah, I think God, the whole game has changed. I think um, ebooks coming in at ninety nine p changed everything. I know yeah. in in some countries they they don't do that anymore. You know, in Germany, yeah. I think they all got together and said, let's not like kill each other with these ninety nine p deals. Um, yeah. I think things have changed, and I think. But at the same time, digital books are brilliant because it allows you to have that kind of backlist where books might go out of print. You know, you can, mm. you can, people can pick up your older books. You know, I find that certainly now. I mean, my, people read my render books and then go back and get those. Um, is it more ruthless? I think it's always been pretty ruthless. I think it's, I, I, I think it's, it's a hard thing to be in. I think if, if, if you haven't got the stomach for it, you're going to come unstuck. It's, it's, it's a hard, hard thing to do. Hmm. It is indeed. Chris, um, do you want to ask any random questions? I know we asked these before and we're running out of time for the quiz, but have you got any random ones you want to chuck in there? Um, not necessarily. Do you reckon we could get the quiz in? Yeah. Is that okay with you, Will? I'm cool. Yeah, I've got drinks lined up. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we normally finish in about an hour and then we, we, you know, with the quiz as well. But what we'll do is is the fact that you're kind of keen to stick around a minute. Um, we'll have some questions. I can't remember what we asked before because it's quite a while back. Um, one of them definitely was an addition, which was kind of a chocolate-ish, British kind of thing. Um, Galaxy or Dairy Milk, do you have a preference? Well, I was going to say neither. I am vegan, so I don't have there we go. anything with milk in. But oh, wow. um, okay. but when I did um, a Galaxy, yeah, it won't win. Will. Yeah, Galaxy do do vegan chocolate, and it is actually pretty fit. Right, I'm on it. Yeah, <laughs> good. You can, I'm usually, you can get I'm... it. Yeah, you can get it in Morrison's. So if there's a Morrison's <sighs> near you, press are you vegan? Specialist style. Yeah, I, I went. To, uh, I did that whole like I've not done it recently, but I was vegan for about. Eight months. Um, and... you, I, I am desperate to get someone on this show that is full on uh, diet orientated because you've had so many diets. I can't believe it. I know. I have literally done a whirlwind of diets because the reason I came off being vegan was because I put on so much weight eating cheese and potatoes that I then looked into it <laughs> other extreme diets. And then Zach Efron did this thing where he's like, just gotta eat protein, man. Like this is the thing, and I was like, if I could just look like Zac Efron. <coughs> um, so, so that's how I switched. Uh, just even a bit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Beer. Uh, sorry, cheese and potatoes. Yeah, because, um, well, not not with vegan, because obviously oh, okay. you can't eat cheese. They do have certain cheeses that you can have. Like they're, they're not quite the same. There are but, vegan cheeses, and they're not great. Yeah. Yeah, the ice cream's amazing though. Ben and Jerry's do a vegan range. That's 
fantastic. Vegan wine. Yeah, yeah, the cookies. Phenomenal. Mm. Chris, we've been, mm. we've, been, we've been approaching the run sponsors this whole time. Um, <laughs> yeah. Biscoff. Uh, if we could get sponsored by Biscoff, oh. that would be the dream because that is the oh. ultimate vegan deliciousness. A, a question in from Azim. He says, what was your most enjoyable experience about, about being a writer? Which is a great question. That is a good question. Hmm. Yes. Um, the, Asim uh, was the very first person I ever signed a book for. I was so incredibly wow. nervous. Wow. I was so nervous. It was back in like 2011 or something, I'm sure. And I was just, I was shaking. I'd never signed a book before. Um, wow. I think, the, uh, I don't know, the most enjoyable experience, I think, when you first get your cover, that is so amazing. When you see it on a shelf, that's incredible. And then... I don't know when someone someone reads it and tells you that it's not shit. That's that's great as well. I think you know those are the three. Those are the three. It's, it, I, I, I've got to agree. I think my first one was when someone who I didn't know had left a review that was from America. I was like, yeah, yeah they they don't know me. It can't be yeah, bullshit. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, Sarah, who is my wife, by the way, says, "Oh my god, please get Ben and Jerry as a sponsor." I think that's bad news for my health. Um, you know, not mm-hmm. good. Yeah, just stick to the beer, yeah. 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 Just the, the thing the guy who invented Ben and Jerry's, one of I'm guessing it's Ben and not Jerry. Uh, <laughs> he had a triple heart bypass at forty nine from eating so much ice cream. Mm. So yeah. Good, good omens there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. what an advert. Yeah. Yeah. Great. <laughs> he says great I yeah, know. Great answer. Um <laughs> so let's get on with the, the quiz. And what this is, we've got eight questions, and yeah. I love Chris to lose. Um, so, Will, you need to you need to step up here, uh, okay. <laughs> just because just because I want Chris to lose. And we have eight questions, and I'll ask one question to one of you. And if they don't know the answer, I'll pass it on. If you get it, then you get the point. Um, and simple as that. So, Chris, oh, we'll start with you. Okay. No, we'll start with we'll start with Will because okay. the guest, of course. Oh. So, uh, quiz time. Okay quiz uh in back to the future <laughs> what year does marty mcfly travel to uh you know back in time is it 1945 1950 1955 or 1960 55 he goes from 85 to 55 um that was he... very very confident yeah i feel pretty confident about it <laughs> chris would you Am I wrong? <laughs> I, I don't know if i'd have been as confident as well with that one to be honest well, he's right. It's, it's not oh, right. I was going to say, no, you made me question <laughs> myself. Yeah. So that's one null to uh, Will straight away. No passing on there at all. So, Chris, oh, question God. to you. In coming to America, Prince Akeem and uh, Samid take jobs working at a knockoff of which company? Is it Walmart, McDonald's, Chuck E. Cheese, or Blockbuster? I have never seen that film. You what? Um, no, I've Brilliant. never seen it. It's a great oh. film. Uh, Just guess this one in four. I'm sure you've got to say Walmart. Oh, he's wrong. <laughs> it looks like we're passing it over. It's yeah, it's McDonald's because they, they work at McDowell's, don't they? Yeah, indeed it is. Oh, That's two no to uh, uh, to Will there, Chris. Can you catch us up? So over to Will. Okay. Where did Kevin's family travel to in Home Alone? The is first Paris, one. Oh, sorry. New York, yeah, go on. London or Los Angeles? Uh, it's Paris in the first one. It was. I'm not even going to delay that. It's just too easy. Uh, it was yeah. Paris. So it's 3 0 yeah. no, to Will. Mm. Chris? Yeah, I should I just leave something. now? I mean, 3 0. I, mean, I mean, it's pretty dire, that, isn't it? It's going to be a good comeback. It, mm. Well, it's out of eight. So unless you get this, we're pretty much going for a draw. So uh, <laughs> what is the name of Jeff Goldburn's character in Jurassic Park? Is it Dr. <laughs> Elliot Grant, Dr. Max Donner, Dr. Ari Richards, or Dr. Ian Malcolm? Oh, that last one's thrown me a little bit. I'm going to say You need this, Chris. You need this, Chris. You need this, Chris. Oh, no, I've got it wrong then. Uh, uh, I don't know. (laughs) It's one of the middle two. It's one of the middle two. All right, okay. Well, Chris, what do you say? Max Max Donner sounds like something you would order. What did you just say, Chris? So I'm going to say... Is it Richards, Dr. Richards? Oh, dude, don't listen to Will, Chris. What did you say? I've guessed them all now, Chris. Oh. One of them must be right. Go on. Give me an answer. I've given oh. you four. Max Donner. Oh, that's... That. Uh, passing on to Will, what is the answer, Will? 
No, so I thought fun. I thought Malcolm was the uh, was the white beard dude, and Grant was thinking, oh no, I'll go for Ari Richards. Then I've got this wrong. Uh, Chris, what did you say? I said Elliot Grant as the first one. No, it's one. Ian Malcolm. Uh, is uh, is Doctor Grant? Really? It, it's Jeff Goldblum. Yeah. Gosh. Okay, but, so back to Will. Okay, you can pretty much seal. I put you off. Here. I put you off there, man. Sorry. No, I give him <laughs> enough chances. Yeah. yeah. In Forrest Gump, which Oscar-winning actor played Forrest? Forrest's mum. Is it Sally Field, Jane Fonda, Meryl Streep, or Dean Keaton? Sally Field. Oh, he's so good. He's straight in there. Mm. <laughs> Chris, you're getting slammed. Uh, yeah. Okay, back to Chris. The Hunger Games, what district who was Katniss and uh, Peter from? Peter. This is 5, 9, 12, or 15. Again, I've never read The Hunger Games. Wow. I don't even actually think I've seen the film. District 12. You have <laughs> guessed it very well. Yeah, uh, District 12 indeed. Absolute okay. guess. Yep, there's, t there's three questions left. Um, back to Will. What is the name yeah. of the second James Bond film? Is it Goldfinger, From Russia With Love, Diamonds mm. Are Forever, or Live and Let Die? Oh, what is the second one? Second. Uh, 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 Goldfinger. We are passing it on. Chris, any other answer? Ooh. From Russia with love. <sighs> it is from Russia with love. Gosh. You knew that very well. Chris, Idiot. is that a genuine knowledge? Um, I was thinking about the books. I was thinking okay. the order they might well have played, gone Well played, well played. Um, back to you, Chris. Who directed Titanic, Avatar, and The J Terminator? James Cameron. <laughs> Do you want the answer selections or...? Well, you can, but it's, if it's not in there, I'll be shocked. <laughs> Chris, yeah, for Nolan. Uh, James Cameron, Ridley Scott, or Steven Spielberg? Yeah, I said James Cameron. <laughs> okay, <laughs> well done. Um, uh, Will wins by a milestone uh, landslide. Um, I think like 8 2. Uh, no, it was 8 yeah. questions. So, so he's. Just call it 7 1. Call it 7 yeah, 1. Even I think that. it was closer, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so well done, Will. I mean, you seem very, very up on your movie knowledge. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I've got quite a... Well, I used to have a really big collection. Like, I still have, like, 3,000 videos in my mum's loft. Just no like, I don't, what do I do? What do I do with those? It's um, in videos, it's in... Videos like VHS TV. tapes, yeah, yeah. And then my DVDs, I've probably got a couple of thousand. And then... But now I'm just kind of just wow. downloading it all on... You know, I mean, iTunes and things. Disney, I know Disney films back in the day, or like the old ones now, are worth a lot of money on VHS. Yeah. Have you got any classics in there that could be a fortune? Is that one? Um, I've, I've definitely got a few, yeah, because they kind of release them periodically, don't they? And then you yeah. suddenly can't get them. Um, yeah, I've definitely got some in there. Wow. Have yeah. you, what, what's your, I, I mean, you must have a lot of films there between the, the VHS, the DVD and all that stuff now. Is it what? What can you always go back and watch without any sort of? I, I can't be asked to watch that. It's like it's always there. I I, watch I, that I, I try. To, I watch um, Manhattan. Uh, what like once a month? Like I just, Britain. I just okay. love it. I just, I love New York, and I love that whole vibe and that whole time. Anything from the seventies, I love. I, I'm so, gonna yeah. have to watch that um, Manhattan. I think it's on the list to watch. Yeah, do it. Mm. Definitely. So, mm. just before we go, Will, um, football. Mm. Are we allowed to talk about it this this season? Because obviously, we know you're a football fan from last time you're on the show. Yeah, it's awful, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I don't, know, I don't, I don't know what happened. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm like a Spurs fan, which is like, oh come on, I support Cardiff. Shut up, you lot. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, but it's just yeah. I mean, you know, get over we, it. I think you know we lost our manager because of this Super League thing, and then we lost. Yeah, you know, we're gonna lose Kane, obviously, aren't we? Um, so, do you think so? Do you think Kane? Where do you think he's gonna go? I think he's yeah, seventies of my life. Yes, yeah, right. All the music in the film. Um, I think it, you know, Man United. It looks that way, doesn't it? Um, it's good, they're gonna have to pay a lot of money. But Who, yes. who's your Harry Kane replacement if you could have anyone? I don't know. We're not gonna get anyone because we're not in the Champions League, so we're not gonna get anyone. We'll end up with. I don't know. I tell you who I, I, the uh, lead striker Bamford. He's been really good, you know. I think, you know, uh, but but then Leeds have done all right. But I think he could go to a bigger club, couldn't he? he could go to a bigger club. 
I mean, I'll you lose Bale as well. Classic Welsh, you know, legend. Um, yeah, legend. Uh, what a player. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I mean, it's been fantastic to have you on, Will. Before we do go and wrap this up, where can people find the Beresford and all your other, you know, your back catalogue and find out about you on the website? I mean, they must do this right now. If you're watching this, you have to go and find out if you don't know already. Where can they find it, Will? Well, in, what is it, like two and a bit hours, you'll be able to get the Beresford on ebook on Amazon and uh, Kobo and um, Apple Books because it's, it's just the digital version out. To begin with, if you want any of the others, go to your local independent bookshop or a Waterstones yes. or something like that. But, but you know, you know, my friend Four Bears Books, go to him. He'll sort <laughs> you out and I'll sign it for you as well if you go there. And he loves to talk about, you know, the celebrity, celebrity affairs. Yeah, absolutely. I know. Um, fantastic, <laughs> Will. Thank you so, so much for coming back on the show and we absolutely loved it. And uh, Chris was a clearly a massive fan of the books and he will cherish this forever um <laughs> guys please stay safe and we'll see you next week with some great guests again and uh, um over to you chris yeah i mean all i can say is thank you so much will and if if you're watching now and you haven't picked up one of will's books then you definitely need to do it i recommend books on this show all the time and i can't recommend these books highly enough go and pick any of them up and you'll thoroughly enjoy them i know for, for a fact you will if you don't you can pick a bone with me <laughs> and that's fine <laughs> um, and I'll argue as to why you're wrong but yeah pick them up pick them up yeah charge Chris with the uh, invoice for the book uh, I mean <laughs> yeah. Yeah. we'll give some away anyway we'll give our books away right we'll give we'll give the Beresford away Chris yeah let's let's give a few yeah. copies of the Beresford away if you tell us what the best celebrity affair would be we'll <laughs> nice. give you a copy of uh, the Beresford there you go uh, on Twitter hashtag the WCCS the writing community chat show hashtag the Beresford Tell us what the most famous, uh, you know, celebrity affair was, and we will gift somebody uh, the Beresford from that oh, answer. Just one that you'd like to see, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Love to see that. Kanye West and Mary Berry, if that's. What yeah. I, want to see. <laughs> I would love to. There's the sex scene I want to write. Yeah. <laughs> really, I mean, Donald Trump and someone's got to be in there. I mean, oh, who Ooh. knows. Um, that was a great, great one, Chris. So please do that, and we will give a copy of the Barrister away. And uh, check out Will's website. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. Enjoy your weekend. Stay safe and, and look after yourselves. And uh, Mental Health Week, look after your mental health. If you want to talk to us, please do so. And we will see you very soon. Thank you, guys. Goodbye. Cheers, guys. Thanks.